Hi everyone, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to Muddy Wolf Studios. In this video, we'll be creating this smooth mouse follow. So we've attached this follow script to this, um, this ball here and it will smoothly follow you around the environment. If you go past the environment, you'll see it gets stuck, which is good, um, I assume. I assume you don't want pathfinding on a ball you're controlling because you should do the pathfinding. Well, anyway, so um, so yeah, it'll get stuck on pieces, but once it finds its way out of that, um, it'll continue on uh, going and it doesn't jitter. So there's other ways you could do this, which are wrong <laughs> and um, you can get it to jitter. So when you're going in here, it starts jittering like this into the wall. But in this method, it doesn't. So without further ado, let's crack on with the video. OK, guys, so I have Unity Hub open version 2.1.3, as you can see up here. And I'm going to create a new instance using Unity. Um, 2019.2.11 f1 I'm going to create a 2d and I'm going to call this project um, smooth mouse follow unity no it doesn't need that part uh, I'm going to click enter and that's going to come uh, set up unity so once that's done I will see you then okay welcome back we have uh, just come uh, loaded up Unity and we have the smooth uh, mouse follow and everything all set up. So first thing I need to do is actually need to import some um, assets. So I'm going to import some shapes assets which I use for basically just testing stuff. So they're very basic shapes, they're square, so 256 um, and quality none. Let's click apply and let's click sprite editor. No sprite anywhere. Please download 2D sprite package from package manager. What? Okay, now we can finally edit our sprites because I had to download a sprite editor package, which was very weird. I've never done that before. So we're we'll going to click slice. It's going to be on automatic and I'm just going to click slice. If I click off this and I click into each. Oh, I need to make this screen a lot bigger. Where have you gone? There it is. I need to make this screen a lot bigger. There we go. So you see we've got each individual slice. I'm going to click apply and cut. Now in our shapes, you'll see we have a bunch of different things. So we have the circle, which is the one we're going to be using for our player or our, the one we're controlling. And then we're going to have a couple of other shapes. But first, let's get the mouse follow script on. So I'm going to add a component. I'm going to say mouse follow or follow mouse, whichever way you want to name it. It's totally up to you, so let's drop, make sure that's on there. And once that's on there, we also need two other components. We need the circle collider 2D, and we also need a rigid body 2D foot to be able to use physics. So the circle collider allows us to collide with other objects, and the rigid body 2D adds physics to our character. We want to remove the gravity because this isn't this is something you'd use in a non-gravity scenario. Well, you can use it in a scenario with gravity, but I prefer to use it without it. It's a lot smoother that way. Um, and now that it's done, we can double click on our mouse follow script and this will open it up in Visual Studio. Um, not today. Okay, so we have our script. Um, so first things first, we don't need any of the system stuff because we're not needing those. We just need a Unity engine namespace pulled through. Um, I'm just going to remove that and bring that onto that line, although it's going to go back down onto a different line anyway. But anyway, we need a vector free. So, and this is going to be our mouse position position because our mouse position will return a vector free, um, especially when we confer it into a world space um, position. We then need a public flow, which we're going to be calling move speed. We're going to set that to default to 0.1f, but um, so the move speed is how fast or how far behind it trails the actual mouse. If you set this to zero, it would instant, or no. If you set this to, let's say, one, it would move a lot faster towards the mouse. Um, so we also need a rigid body 2D, well, reference to our rigid body 2D, so that's going to be a rigid body. And then we also need a vector 2 called position, which is going to be equal to a new vector 2 which is just going to take in 0 and 0 uh, both floats so that's all our variables set up we need to create the start 
um, method, which Unity provides to us for on startup off the script. And we're going to say RB is equal to get component and it's going to say rigid body 2D because we're trying to get the component attached to our current, uh, what, what our script is attached to. We're now going to say update and oh, that's a Rifer update. That's not normal. <laughs> I've never heard of one of those before. Um, and so the first things we need to get are a couple of things. We need to get, we need to set the mouse position and we're going to set this to input dot mouse. That's nice, but mouse position. And that's going to get us the mouse position, but it's going to get us the mouse position in pixels and we want it in world space. To do that, we need to say mouse position is equal to camera dot main so it's getting our main camera so this gets the actually it says here the first the first enabled camera tagged main camera and we're going to say screen to or screen to world point so it's going to get our pixels and convert into a world point and we're going to pass through mouse position so the same variable uh, because that currently is set to our mouse's position now we're going to set our position variable equal to a vector two dot lerp because what lerp does is it linearly interpolates, so basically it tweens between two points. So um, if you say you want it at world point one, and then you say you want it to move to world point two, it basically moves you between the a and the b vector. So in here, we're going to say our current transform dot position because that's where we start want to start from. So where the object currently is, we want to move it to our mouse position, and how fast we want to move it is our move speed. Um, but we don't want to do we don't want to apply this position inside of update because any sort of um, physics based um, system you want to put inside of fixed update. So we're going to create a fixed update. And this is why we made this a global variable. So we can say rb.move position, and I'm gonna say position. And I'm not gonna to lie to you, that is all we need to do for this script. So if we come back into our scene, I'm actually gonna drop in two squares. Square number one. We're gonna add a box collider 2D, and I'm gonna scale this up to two by two. We're also going to add another square with a box collider 2D. And this one will scale up to 3x3. Three three. There we go. And now if we click play, you'll see the mouse is now following closely to, um, or not the mouse, the ball is following nicely to my mouse um, quite quickly um, and promptly. Now if we go and change some variables, let's say on the circle we change this to 1, this is going to make it move a lot faster and pretty much instantly stick to our mouse. So as you can see, now it's like lit it literally is stuck to the mouse. It's not as smooth because um, your mouse movements are aren't as smooth when it's this close, but it keeps it pretty close. But let's say we want to set a 0 0.05, so even slower um, from what we had it originally. This is now going to leave a nice drag effect, so it's like slowly catching up to the mouse slightly behind which I think is a really nice effect so as you can see you can move it from here all the way around and it will follow it nicely and as we hit stuff it will get blocked but it won't it won't be a jittery blocked it will just be stuck blocked so guys this is um, it for the tutorial I hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you hit that subscribe button, you'll get notified as, and the bell button. You'll get notified as soon as a new video goes live. And if you have any feedback, don't forget to drop it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep muddy.